Welcome to our webinar on the uh, uh, opening uh, open development with Jakarta EE and uh, Open Liberty. We're pleased today to have you with us to discuss the upcoming Jakarta EE 10 release. And we have a uh, full panel of, um, of our subject matter experts with us today um, from IBM and from the uh, Jakarta EE community. I would like to kick it off uh, today. My name is Neil Patterson. I'll be the uh, the host for you, the session, and uh, we're going to kick it off with a uh, a question. You'll see uh, five questions that we've got lined up for our panelists today. But please um, share any questions that you want uh, the panelists to cover uh, in the chat. We'll be uh, looking for those. And uh, but to kick it off, we're going to ask our panelists to open up by describing how they're involved with the Jakarta EE community. And uh, I'll kick it off by um, looking to Ian Robinson from IBM. Ian, please take it away. Hi, right, thanks, Neil. I, I, I'm going to echo what Neil said right at the beginning. Uh, those five questions that, that you can see in front of you at the moment are the, are the ones we're going to talk about unless and until uh, people on the call uh, have questions they would like to ask, which we will certainly give priority to. Anyway, um, my name's Ian Robinson. Um, I'm involved in a number of different ways. So specifically from a, from a technology delivery point of view, um, I'm the IBM um, distinguished engineer that's responsible for our application platform technologies, which includes WebSphere and Liberty. Um, that's how we implement um, Java-based standards for applications. So we've been we've been delivering through WebSphere and Liberty, Java EE, uh, uh, and then Jakarta EE and MicroProfile, and uh, the underlying Java SE runtime as well for many many years now. So I'm involved in two different ways. Primarily, one is the implementation and delivery of those technologies for our customers, and indeed for other IBM products. Um, that build upon that, um, but also with the standards um, and the community itself. So I've been personally involved in Java EE standards for oh, over 20 years now. Um, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm I'm an I was the uh, the spec lead for a JSR back in the days when there were only two digits in a JSR JSR 95. So that was a long long time ago now. I've been involved in Java EE since the very, very beginning, I'm working on uh, the EJB specification transactions and a number of things since. And I was one of the people that was involved in the creation of the transition to Jakarta EE in the first place, back before it was called Jakarta EE. I think we, we started off calling ourselves um, uh, EE for J. Uh, a snappy name that had no marketing involvement, so Neil wasn't responsible for that uh, back in the days before we threw it open to the community um, and chose the name uh, Jakarta EE. And I was also responsible, or partly responsible, I was involved in the creation of the microprofile community uh, a year or so before that as well. So I'm, 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 I'm involved. Well, thanks, Ian. Um, let's uh, uh, turn it over to... Um one of our guest speakers from the Eclipse Foundation, uh, Ivar, uh, please take it away. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, so uh, I've been involved in Jakari for a long time as well. Currently, I work for the Eclipse Foundation as the Jakari developer advocate. So my, my main work nowadays is to talk about Jakari in, in webinars such as this one and uh, also at conferences Travel has picked up again, so I'm pretty busy these days traveling around Europe and the U.S. for conferences. Uh, beside that, I'm also involved in in in, in the specification committee with Jakarta, and uh, I'm also uh, a committer on on several of the specifications. So I also participate in developing the specifications, and among those are the uh, Jakarta platform project, where we we have. Um, regular meetings, talking about it, and also doing uh, the specification work there. Previously, I've also been involved in the uh, Java community process with Java E, 
and um, been on a, a couple of expert groups there and also was spec lead for the uh, MVC specification there. So I've been involved in Java EE also several years before we became Jakarta EE. So yeah. great. I'll, I think I'll Thanks. stop there. Thank you. Uh, Alistair, um, please uh, let us know how you're involved. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Alice Nottingham, and I'm the uh, lead architect for Open Liberty. Um, I'm also Ian's uh, backup on the um, on the Jakarta EE. I'm trying to remember which steering committee. committee it is. The steering, the steering committee. committee. That's it. Thank yeah. you, Ian. Yeah. Um, I just got back from vacation at yeah. eleven o'clock last night, so um, yeah. Uh, yeah, the... still still trying to page things in. Yeah, and, the, the, um, the, the only actually, requirement the only requirement for the primary Alistair is we can remember what the committee's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um I, I once was back up for um Neil when he was away for the marketing committee. Um so uh I guess I'm I, I'm the IBM backup for uh things. Uh my my role is mainly kind of I oversee the architecture of Liberty, so I tend to spend Whilst I, you know, I, I'm involved and I keep an eye on what's going on in Jakarta EE and I'll express my opinion at times, I'm quite often um, there kind of pushing other people to the forefront to engage um, because, you know, I'm not, you know, I, I find that, you know, whilst I understand a lot of Jakarta EE, I'm not the detailed expert on anything. So I'm more kind of behind the scenes champion for things. Okay, great. Um, Jared, you you are um, our uh, Cardi expert uh, at IBM. I uh, invite you to introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name is Stuart Anderson. Um, my role at IBM is the Jakarta EE development lead. So I'm in charge of making sure that uh, we are developing Jakarta EE implementation, um, mostly in support moving forward on Liberty. Um, obviously, we still have Java EE within traditional WebSphere, but you know, so any of the responsibilities there. Also, I am involved um, as needed. I'm involved over in the platform committee, um, making sure that everything is coming together. Um, you know, working with on our side how the TCK is working and, and passing or not passing uh, for our implementation moving forward. Great, great, thank you. And uh, Tanya, please uh, introduce yourself and, and let us know how you're involved. Hi there, uh, my name is uh, Tanya Obradovic. Uh, I am the uh, Jakarta EE uh, Program Manager and I work for uh, Eclipse Foundation, but more specifically for, uh, for the Jakarta EE Working Group. Um, before uh, Jakarta EE um, uh, uh, became uh, or was established, um, I was also an um, application developer at some point uh, using um, Jakarta back then Java E standards and, and even before Java E and, and, and so on. So I'm quite familiar with the, with the um, standards and framework, uh, but it was a great opportunity to get involved even further within Jakarta E and the working group. So what I'm really doing is uh, helping out and making sure that the community and the working group are, uh, is making, are making continuous progress um, that uh, 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 all the committees of the working group, uh, uh, like uh, marketing committee, specification committee, and uh, of course steering committee um, are um, uh, where they should be and they have everything they need in order to make progress. So um, it is a great opportunity to uh, be involved uh, um, in the event like this and, and, and talk about uh, uh, some of the successes. I also uh, presented uh, our conferences and uh, I will be delighted to talk to you all today. Great. Uh, thank you uh, all for introducing yourselves. Um, I'd like to jump right into the uh, release of Jakarta E10 being just days away. Uh, we're anxiously awaiting uh, all the um, process to, uh, to make its way uh, through and um, so I'd like to invite you to uh, tell us one thing that stands out about this new release and um, why you feel it's uh, significant. Uh, and maybe Alistair, I can start with you. Um, that's unfair. I just got back from, got off a flight at 11 o'clock last night. <laughs> um, I, I would actually pass it on to someone else to start with. I'll go on, then I'll go. <laughs> so 
So, <laughs> so if go I ahead. if I can I go first then, Neil? Yeah, sure. Go on. So, so I would say that um, the thing that makes the thing that makes Jakarta te- uh, Jakarta Ten different from the previous Jakartas is that it's intro- it's Jakarta Jakarta Eight and Nine established Jakarta as the you know the evolution, the next phase um, of the platform after Java EE. Uh, but really was more about aligning with other standards like the you know later versions of the underlying Java SE, um, new package names that were required for Jakarta. 10 actually delivers some uh, forward momentum on the platform, a lot of which, a lot of which, maybe I shouldn't over-egg it, some of which is has been inspired by work that many of us did earlier on um, in the microprofile community. So, for example, um, when we started microprofile a few years ago, we identified a few, uh, you know, a relatively modest subset of what were at the time Java EE specifications as a foundation on which to build new microprofile technologies. And that inspired something that we delivered um, in Jakarta EE10, which is the core profile. So it's a recognition that there are a subset of technologies um, in Java EE that form the basis of most new cloud native applications. So the specific, you know, the, so the, the definition of that core profile as something that new cloud native applications would typically build on, on which I expect in the future, um, the micro profile uh, specifications themselves uh, to become dependent on is something that's uh, that's new and different in Jakarta EE 10. So that stands out for me. Can I go um, next? Yeah, go ahead, Tanya. Okay. So um, what stands out for me in this one is uh, uh, really the true innovation that is uh, coming true. Uh, not that we didn't see that before, but uh, within the context of the working group, um, I think we're 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 seeing um, I would almost say a little bit of a surge of um, uh, thinking ahead and where we can uh, uh, go further. But this release in particular is uh, uh, with with some of the new um, uh, variants of the specifications and uh, uh, um, new specifications that are emerging. Um, uh, showing the the willingness of the community and the working group to take this uh, um, uh, 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 standard set of standards uh, uh, further. So I'm, I'm alluding primarily to the core profile and, and CDI Lite, um, and it is uh, uh, there are many others, but uh, uh, that is that is a uh, really true um, testament to the value of these uh, specifications. So yeah, Ivar, one, one how, how about that, yeah, so so one thing I think it stands out with uh, E10, especially if you compare it to to nine and eight, is that this uh, this release actually delivers new functionality, and and if you look at it, it's it's a fairly massive update. It's I think it's twenty two specifications that have updates, and out of them, uh, nine or ten are major updates. That means that we are we're potentially breaking some backwards compatibility here with the major updates. And and one thing that kind of also, if you look at the details of the various specifications, is that they are pruning things that has been kind of marked to be removed previously. So, so we were slimming it down and, and getting rid of uh, old stuff. So, so it, it, it will be a more modern platform, more uh, more slimmer, uh, and we kind of get rid of the the legacy. Like uh, the last thing last week, we we said that uh, uh, container managed persistence and bean managed persistence that's out. We're not supporting it anymore. So 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 we're sort of taking those things that were optional and take it away 
so, so, so we're kind of pruning the platform and making it lighter. And and also, Ivar, if I uh, just may add, uh, it, it, it beautifully fits in with uh, what you said. Um, kind of the three words that we chose to describe these uh, uh, this uh, uh, release is modernized, simplified, and lightweight. And that's pretty much summing up uh, um, uh, everything Ivar just said. Uh, if, if, could I invite either um, Jared or Alistair uh, to say a few words about um, things? So Ivar managed breaking backward compatibility, uh, and that, that, that is something that is um, or can be um, a challenge with new technologies as they move forward. Um, but we've done something fairly unique in our implementation in Open Liberty to protect our customers from feeling any discomfort from breaking such backward compatibility. M maybe Jared or Alistair want to pick up on that. Yeah, I can take a little bit of that there. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. Um, so with Liberty, you know, we actually provide implementations of Java EE and Jakarta EE all running concurrently. So you know, just because you move up to a new version of Liberty that supports Jakarta E9 or Jakarta E10 moving forward doesn't mean any of your applications that you previously had running there would stop working just because Jakarta E10 has these breaking changes that were referenced. Uh, because you could still run with the Java E9 features within your server or Java E8, et cetera, um, if you still were using applications that use that specification as you make that evolution over to the new specification. Otherwise, to the overall question at hand, the other thing I would point out that stands out with this release is we have moved up to a new minimum Java level with Java E10. So the Java SE level is minimum now at 11. So we're moving forward with the evolution of what's been happening on the SE side as well um, so that, you know, customers are starting to, you know, pushing customers to move over to the newer versions of Java SE. Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned that Java SE version because what we're also doing is that we're making sure it runs on 17. So, so, so you have to run on at least 11, but you can run on 17 if you want to. So. Um, I mean, to, to go back to the kind of second question, maybe bridge to the third one, I, I kind of think one of the big things about Jakarta 10, you know, and I think the some of the changes are are really quite you know shows a lot of pent up kind of desire for evolution of the these apis um but it's the fact that it's been done in the open um you know jakarta e8 jakarta e9 i mean there wasn't really any kind of changes being uh made to the specifications um in in that uh but with 10 um, it's all been it's all been developed and and delivered by kind of open open source collaboration between the many interested parties, and it's not just having people who you know implement the runtime uh, expressing opinions. Anyone can come along and ask for changes, um, advocate for changes, and get involved in the the standards evolution. So um, if you're a uh, if you're a user of the technology, if you, uh, as well as a producer of the technology, you can get involved and, and advocate for change. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that we've seen with uh, Jakarta E10. It's actually less about all of the cool new capabilities that have been added, and it's more in how this platform, how the specifications are evolving moving forward. Yeah, and, and there is also one specification that we we, we haven't really talked talk about yet, and and it's part of the of the core profile, and, and that is a new flavor of CDI. So we're introducing a a new specification called CDI Lite. It, it is a subset of CDI, but 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 it's still a a, a fairly a, can, can be considered a, a new specification, and and what they're doing there is to add a new extensions API. So you can still use the old way of writing uh, portable extensions with CDI. But what they are introducing in, in CDI Lite is a build compatible extensions. 
and, and that means to, you can write extensions that are kind of resolved dynamically at at build time so you can compile to native image if, if you want to so, so, so we're kind of opening up for other ways of using the platform and, and compiling to native if, if that's interested so any other thoughts on um how the um the this uh collaboration in the open um is uh coming together or you know there are, you know, we, we heard uh, just, uh, what was it, uh, this week that, um, for example, Microsoft has joined uh, the uh, Jakarta um, working group. Uh, and um, so it, it looks like there are, um, there's going to be even more organizations joining to, uh, to collaborate around the standard. Um, any thoughts on uh you know even the impact of uh of microsoft joining and um and what that will you know what other organizations I'll, will see i'll observe that big corporations tend to join things when they're uh when they're gathering momentum so i'm, I'm taking that as a very good sign yeah i, I think uh um me being uh, uh involved in in all aspects of the working group uh kind of like i'm i'm, I'm as as one would say, over the moon with uh, uh, over uh, with all the um, corporations and membership uh, uh, growth that we're seeing lately, um, it is extremely important for us to see. Um, I don't want to name anyone, but but uh, Microsoft is uh, certainly the, the the latest one that that has joined. Um, it does show uh, momentum. It shows the commitment. So momentum for, for us and, and, and worth of, of the work that we're doing, but also um, kind of additionally invites community um, out there to get involved and, and further develop the work on the development of the specifications. Because it is very important to say that uh, while corporations are enabling all this work, uh, of course, uh, it's not, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, quite a few individuals not associated with any of the corporations working on the, um, uh, 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 in the open source ma manner, working um, on the development of the specifications and learning from uh, the leaders in the, um, uh, employed by, by our members um, and, and working out uh, um, uh, where we should go next. So it is uh, the implication is that uh, um, you know we're we're definitely um, it, it's an affirmation uh, that we're doing the right thing that there is a, a greater interest of uh, developing uh, these specifications um, and uh, testament to um, success we made so far I would say. Anyone as excited as I am, or it's just Ian and me? No, no, I, 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 am certainly excited to see it. I, I mean, we've we've seen the uh, the growth of the community in um, in different regions as well, and uh, that's that's exciting to uh, to see. Um, and I think it it uh, echoes the um, uh, the value that we've been seeing from an IBM perspective in uh, you know just working. Uh, collaboratively with many organizations, many you know competitors and um, uh, and also uh, customers uh, in the uh, the various open um, open standards uh, that lead to us being able to adopt uh, adopt them and uh, and use those uh, standards in our own uh, offerings. So, um, just wondered. Uh, Maybe it's an opportunity just quickly to say to the audience uh, the way the the um, uh, Jakarta EE is established within the Eclipse Foundation. So we have a working group that is consortium of, of uh, industry leaders. So currently we have um, um, uh, over 20 um, uh, members uh, within the uh, working group um, uh, as, as organizations. And they are working collaboratively on uh, developing the the uh, specifications. Uh, and uh, outside 
of, of, of it. They are all independently working on their own uh, products supporting or implementing these specifications. So um, through what, what was uh, mentioned earlier, uh, collaboration, uh, uh, very strong collaboration, I would say, on, on one level, um, and uh, at the same time, competitors on the, on the market. In addition to, to this, uh, within the working group, we have um, uh, quite a few independent uh, uh, individuals who are also involved and more than welcome to, to be involved in. We're looking to grow that community and, and that involvement from the individuals. Uh, they're also involved in 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 uh, the work um, of the of the uh, on, uh, in the work of developing of the specifications, and you know um, uh, uh, everything around it. So doc documentations or uh, document uh, specification documents or um, TCKs um, or examples, anything around. Uh, um, uh, anything related to the Jakarta e work. Great, great. Um, I, I did notice uh, uh, from our audience, uh, we've got a, another question that has come in. Um, I'd like to insert it here if we can and maybe get a, a couple of peop people to uh, comment on it. Um, is Jakarta EE ever going to get away from some XML configs, like for uh, persistence.xml and others and move <laughs> more to annotations. Yeah, I can give it a shot there. Yeah. So so we you can create uh, most Jakari applications without much of XML config. It is mentioned here the the uh, persistent XML and that kind of things. Uh, that's probably going to stick around, but there is a new spec that is being worked on called uh, Jakarta config that will allow for other ways of configuration. So it doesn't have to be an XML file if that's uh, if you want to write it in YAML or a property file or something else. That will be supported and it can be uh, injected with uh, annotations. So, so yes, there will be alternatives for XML files in the future, but you will still be able to use them if you want. To. But I, I don't know if Jakarta config is going to do any replacement for these XML files because it's more about application configuration than it is about exactly. So, uh, so the, the, yeah, so, so the problem, yeah, yeah. XML or EJB jar XML. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, um, and you know, as as Eva says, you know, quite a lot of that is already optional. I I actually noticed that uh, there is uh, there was an item raised um, against the JPA to have an XML-less option for persistent XML and ORM.XML. Uh, I have it doesn't appear that it's had any any real traction since it was raised in February this year. Um, but you know my you know my kind of um, my expectation is over time uh, most things which are currently only XML now will end up moving to annotations just because that seems to be the direction of travel. Um, I, you know, uh, I, I think you know some things will. Some specifications may decide that they're going to even forego out annotations in favor of, you know, reusing Jakarta config. Um, although it's not entirely clear to me that things like persistence XML gain that much benefit from, um, from application level configuration, because um, they really describe the shape of the the application. That's not gen generally something that you want to allow overriding at deployment time. Yeah, but there are going to be things that you're going to want to override at deployment time, and sometimes baking things in as annotations into the source that you always have to change the source in order to, you know, change some of your configuration for any of the different components within Jakarta EE um, does become an issue for several customers because they don't want to have to rebuild everything if all they want to do is change a little config option um, that they can easily do with an XML file without having to, you know, dig into the code. Okay, great. Um, uh, let's uh, let's move along then to um, the uh, perception um, by the enterprise Java community of the Jakarta E10 release. How do you how do you see this uh, uh, being perceived, uh, both from a uh, 
you know, the contributor's perspective and also, um, you know, end users, uh, how, what, what, uh, what's your uh, thoughts on this? I'm, I'm, I'm going to echo something that Alistair said earlier on. I think it was Alistair. It might have been Ivar, actually, about pent-up uh, pent enthusiasm uh for uh for moving technologies forward now that that's very much from the perspective of the community contributing uh to the platform but it's been a while since there has been an outlet for that innovation and jakarta ee10 has provided that out outlet right at the very beginning when we launched uh jakarta ee it was always the case that no new innovation. And we had a gate down on essentially eight and nine because we knew what we needed to do for eight and nine to actually get um, to get ourselves into a place where we could innovate. And Jakarta EE10 was the first real opportunity to do any of that innovation. And there really has been uh, from the community some pent up, um, I'll call it frustration uh, in terms of how things can be moved forward. So bearing in mind what we've seen from the platform contributors, the, their enthusiasm to move so many specs forwards, um, I, I'm expecting to see a similar amount of enthusiasm uh, on the adoption side as well. Yeah, what I experience when I present Jakarta E10, especially when I show the slide with all the specs that has been updated, it's usually a wow, and they take out the camera to photo because this is this is mm -hmm. kind of okay. This is a lot. This is good. We're getting something here, and and some of the features are are as Ian said, something that has been requested for a very long time, and finally is there. So 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 I, I think the it will be uh, received as yes, we're getting what we wanted, and let's build something more. Yeah, and I think. Go ahead. The other thing I think is, you know, we, like this question we just asked, you know, with the persistent XML and annotations, I think there's some going to be potentially some enthusiasm coming from um, the community out there to say, hey, they're making changes. Here's something else I'm looking for in helping us to drive forward with even more changes into the future. Yeah, right and we're looking forward to that input. I also wanted to echo what uh, uh, I believe Ivar said uh, recently on one of the conferences. There was uh, in audience, uh, people were commenting they cannot wait for Jakarta 10 to come out so they can start moving their application and, and modernizing it. Um, so uh, that was really uh, uh, very exciting to see. Do you, do you think that um, this pent up demand is uh, part of the reason we haven't seen um, as quick a migration to Jakarta E uh, or adoption of the uh, previous versions? Yeah, I, I, I think that because we created Jakarta E9 as a sort of, okay, this is just a namespace you can upgrade here and make sure your application runs on the new namespace. But for a, a, a customer to actually do that and invest in that upgrade, I, I feel that most of them are actually waiting for 10 and then they can get something as well and doing that right. migration now. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of, I, I always get worried when we try and, you know, treat all enterprise Java community as, as one thing, because a lot of different people have different perspectives. Uh, but I, I agree with Eva. I mean, as, you know, as important as Jakarta E9 was um, for moving uh, the platform forward, it was from a, from an end user perspective, getting to Jakarta E9, it was, a, it was work for really no benefit. And that's why, um, that's why uh, you know we think there's going to be much more an appeal to EE10 because EE10 actually gives people things that they may be able to make use of, and it's a pull. You know the changes are, are the pull factor. If if all you're doing is you know making a change to effectively stand still, well you 
and from uh, many many companies you would prefer to um keep uh you know keep keep doing what you're currently doing and put that attention on something else like i don't know um working out how to containerize your monoliths um Yeah, uh, great, great points. Um, you know, the the uh, the uh, incentive to move forward um, with new uh, newer technology is is certainly something that I think will pull uh, a lot of uh, people into the Jacardi uh, space uh, going forward. Um, and looking at the future, uh, what what would you say is you know, beyond Jacardi E10, are there areas uh, that um, have yet to be explored? Are there are there things that you feel are you know still pent up demand? Uh, things that uh, the community would be looking for. So I, th uh, I think beyond ten. So the the, the pent up. Uh, thing was, uh, I, I think we got through a lot of that uh, in Jakarta EE10. I, I think beyond 10, so Jakarta in 11 um, and beyond, I think is going to be about um, more different things. So there, there are, and there are a couple of those. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that nobody can predict the future, but there are certainly some things that we are interested in. Um, so, for example, um, we've got a lot of innovation that we've already done um, in microprofile, and that was done at a time when Jakarta EE didn't exist. Uh, Java EE was, to some extent, stalled. Um, I, so I'm, I'm expecting um, that more of the microprofile technologies will be adopted as is, uh, in future versions of Jakarta EE, so uh, not not everything, but but more of it. Um, there are other things that we're interested in that that aren't in either microprofile or Jakarta EE at the moment. I think there's a lot of interest in uh, specifying, defining APIs for the Java platform to make um, cloud function capability more portable in Java applications, irrespective of which cloud platform uh, you choose to run those applications on. So I think both MicroProfile and Jakarta EE have got an opportunity there. Um, and and I, I, I expect to see some uh, some forward progress there because there's, there's so much interest in it. Yeah, that's a good point. I've, I've been talking about, let's specify some something around Jakarta functions. I've been talking about that right. for years, but let's, let's hope that we can get there. I, I also think that we will see uh, a, a bunch of new specifications and, and things that are, that, that, that are kind of requested. We, we have one specification that has been going for a while uh, for a NoSQL. So, so Jakarta NoSQL is probably going to be a candidate for the platform in the future. Uh, we also have new specifications for sp uh, standardizing gRPC, uh, the Jakarta RPC specification. And we also have a, a brand new proposal going on for Jakarta data, which will uh, kind of solve the same thing as, as Spring Data or, or uh, Delta Spike Data does today. So, so implementing the repository pattern there. So there are new things definitely brewing there. And, and what we... Uh, also need to think about there is how are we composing these things? Because we cannot make Jakarta EE just grow and grow and grow. And, and we, today we have the web profile and we have the core profile. Should we consider something about how, how are we composing the profiles? Because today we have kind of the, the rule or whatever that a, a, the core profile is a subset of web profile, which is a subset of the platform. Should we look at a more kind of composable or, or cherry picking way of, of building these profiles or, or something. I, I think we need to, hey, to think hey, somewhere we've, we've, in that direction. We, we got one of those already. It's called Open Liberty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I, I'm interested as well in knowing uh, Jared and Alistair, uh, what your thoughts are um, 
as things are evolving, what the impact is on open liberty? I mean, as we continue to have Jakarta move forward, um, Liberty will continue to move forward as well. I mean, we're committed to implementing, you know, Jakarta E um, as the new specifications come out, and even some of the new things um, that Eva brought up, even with Jakarta Data, for instance. You know, we're starting to to do some of those prototyping with those newer specifications, um, and seeing whether they they are going to work for our um, customers and and how they will want to be able to use these new specifications. Um, but, you know, as we brought up earlier, just because we move forward with those specifications, we'll, we aren't going to abandon our customers that are running on the older levels. Um, those will continue to work as newer versions come out um, of our product. Uh, we're not going to force them to say, hey, you know, you need to move forward or else. We want to be able to be able, we're going to be able to have our customers be able to use the product that, we provide and continue to get the fixes and not be back leveled, you know, with new older versions and then have security patch issues, um, you know, trying to, to be able to have a more, more secure environment because they continue to run into these CVEs um, with the new security problems that have been coming out over time. I, I want to emphasize the other direction a bit as well, Jared. It's not just about following the specifications. I, I, I mentioned cloud functions for a reason. Uh, we, we're interested in that. Uh, that you know, it, it, within the Open Liberty team, that is something that we are we, we, we're doing some work around that at the moment. And the, where, where Jakarta come, where Jakarta and MicroProfile come into that is when we've got something that we quite like. Um, then you know, we, we we want a broader community than just the Open Liberty community. Uh, to help us get that right, but but we we want something that's you know efficient to start with, uh, and and then to to work within MicroProfile and Jakarta to do something more standard with it as well. So it, it it's it is about uh, adopting new specifications, but it's also about using <laughs> Open Liberty as a place to to innovate to actually inform new standards too. And, and Ian, if I may, uh, with, with that approach and, and the working group uh, approach where, you know, um, many uh, technology competitors are working together to create those standards. So this is the, the great opportunity and <laughs> great uh, uh, um, outcome of the uh, open source collaboration uh, within uh, Jakarta working group to uh, create those standards once you see that something is working for the customers. Yep, agree. Well, great. Um, really appreciate the uh, discussion we've had today. Um, I don't see any uh, new questions coming in through uh, the chat. Um, I'll leave it to our audience. If you have anything you would like to ask our panel, uh, do so uh, uh, now. Um, would like to thank our panel for uh, participating, and uh, I will share um, what are some useful links uh, from our perspective. Um, a, a, a highlight the OpenLiberty.io site, where the as the um, the specifications evolve, Open Liberty evolves, and you can take advantage of uh, uh, the uh, uh, evolution of Open Liberty through OpenLiberty.io. Uh, there are ways to uh, test out the new capabilities, um, constantly evolving. Uh, and I know, uh, Jared, uh, your, you and your team are um, constantly evolving the uh, the beta releases that are coming out, and I expect. Um, you know, as we move forward to Jakarta E10, we'll see a beta release uh, uh, that will uh, support that, and people can start to leverage uh, Jakarta E10 on Open Liberty. Uh, some other sites, uh, links there that um, uh, are related to Open Liberty. Uh, WebSphere Liberty is um, is IBM's uh, uh, fully uh, supported version of the um, 
the in, in fact it shares the code base of uh, Open Liberty and uh, has some extensions for uh, supporting our existing uh, customer base. Uh, so um, invite people to look at that and a few um, related articles and uh, and um, uh, information that you can take advantage of as you look at moving from your existing uh, Java E or Jakarta E technology into the, the future of uh, Jakarta E with uh, Jakarta E 10 and beyond. Um, we, uh, we have some um, articles and so on to support you in that. And, and Neil, Neil, I'm going to say you left the best two sites till last on that list there. So, so work, work from the bottom upwards, anybody that's interested, in my opinion. Right. And if Sounds I may add, don't forget to visit occasionally jakarta.ee. That's where you can find uh, uh, information on the specifications. Sounds great. Um, any last uh, words from uh, our uh, panel? Oh, for me, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I would love to hear from people if uh, once they start moving to um, any implementation of the Jakarta E10, um, we would love to hear from, from anyone using it and their experiences and uh, how we can help further. Also, don't forget to, um, uh, you know, even suggest and look ahead. What would you like to see uh, in the uh, upcoming releases? So uh, just uh, for everyone out there, stay in touch. Yes, I'll, I'll add to that. The, even though Jakarta 10 is coming out in a couple of weeks, then the work with Jakarta E11 will start immediately. So there are no reason to wait. It's just to jump in and, and participate. Well, great. Um, again, we appreciate uh, the, uh, the discussion we've had today. For members of our audience, uh, this will be available for um, on-demand viewing, uh, should you want to come back and uh, and listen to any of it um, after uh, today. And for our panelists, you can share the same link uh, to for anybody that would like to hear about the uh, the discussion that we've had. Um, and with that, I would like to again thank our audience for attending and look forward to the release of Jakarta E10 and the uh, support of it with our Open Liberty product, Jared, Alistair, Ivar, Tanya, and Ian. Thank you again for your help today. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil.